You guys, welcome back. It was on days like this, the sun shining as it began to drizzle. There was talk of a storm approaching. I quickly biked to the market to pick up snacks. There I picked up my first sesame bowl ever and I was hooked. Today I'll be making sesame balls, a snack eaten throughout many Asian countries, each having their own take on it. I'll be making them with three different fillings, my way. Crispy sesame on the outside with a glutinous dough on the inside. It's so fragrant and addicting. Let's get started. This is peeled split mung beans that I've rinsed five times and allowed to soak in room temperature water overnight. Let's boil them until they're soft. When they look like this, they're ready. On medium heat, let's season this mung bean paste. We want to reduce the paste down until a lot of the moisture has evaporated and the paste becomes thick. Mung beans have a slightly sweet and nutty flavor. I suggest using a non-stick pan. Keep stirring. You'll feel like it's never gonna thicken up, but trust me it will. Once you can form a ball like this, it's done. Taro tastes like a milder sweet potato with notes of vanilla and coconut. It's very fragrant. For this filling, we'll apply the same technique used on the mung bean paste. Boil.
puree. Season. This filling is my favorite. It's so savory and aromatic. The flavors pair well with the dough that I'm about to make. Let it cool down, allow it to chill and solidify in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Let's make the dough. We'll need glutinous rice flour and regular rice flour. These are the brands that I can find in my local Asian grocery store. In a mixing bowl, add in the glutinous rice flour, rice flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, coconut milk, water, and mashed potatoes. Yes, I'm using boxed mashed potatoes, which works perfectly here. Mashed potatoes surprisingly add a really nice texture to the dough. It's gonna look like there isn't enough liquid to combine all of the ingredients here, but keep mixing everything together, and it will combine eventually. Let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. Let's form sesame balls.
form balls of dough about the size of golf balls. And for the mung bean and taro filling, form smaller balls about half the size of the dough balls. Flatten out the ball of dough with your palm and fingers. Place the filling ball in the middle and wrap the dough around it. Roll it into a smooth ball with your palms. Press the sesame seeds around the dough. It will stick easily. Repeat the process. Here's one with the taro paste filling. I love the smell of taro and coconut together. Don't worry about getting the balls perfectly circular right now. They will expand a bit in the oil, fixing the shape on their own. And for the meat filling, I suggested letting it sit in the fridge to chill and solidify for a bit, which I didn't do here. Chilling it and allowing it to solidify will make wrapping the dough around the meat filling much easier. The coconut milk in the dough pairs nicely with the savoriness of the pork. Heat up enough oil in a pot so that the sesame balls can eventually float on top. Use a wooden skewer to see if the oil is ready for frying. If bubbles form around the skewer like this, we're ready to start frying. The goal is for the oil to produce gentle bubbles around the sesame balls. Too vigorous and the sesame ball will burn quickly before the inside is cooked. And too stagnant, the sesame ball will soak up a lot of the oil. Cook in batches to prevent overcrowding in the pot. Allow the sesame balls to float to the top and develop a deeper golden color. It smells incredible in here. You can even go a bit more golden than this if you like. Strain each batch. The outside should be crispy 
inside dough should be glutinous. It smells so good, and it reminds me of all the times I used to snack on these. Here we have it, Asian sesame balls. So fragrant and addicting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and leave me a comment below. I'll see you all in the next video. Be safe everyone.